Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and welcome to another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Now today I'm going to be sharing how to create tri-folding cards, or as I like to call it, an excuse to use more images on your cards. Now I'm over at the MFT blog as well today, sharing some of the new My Favorite Things products and these projects with you. So go check that out as well, I'll leave a link down below. And I'm going to get started with this first card here, which only uses one 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock. It's a little bit smaller than a regular A2 sized card though. So I'm going to cut it lengthwise by 5.5 there. And then I'm going to score it right at the 3 and 1 half mark on one of the sides here. And then on the other side, I'm going to flip it over and score it right at the 3 and 3 fourths mark. Now I'll have all the measurements over at my blog as well, so I'll link that down below as well so you can check out both blogs to get more information. But then I'm going to crease this over and fold it, and you can start to see the card coming together here. Now I'm not amazing at math, so this didn't work out completely perfect, but I actually happen to like the little gap that you get right on the inside there. So I left it as is, but you can kind of play around with measurements and see what you like, but this is what I happen to end up using. So after I scored that down, it opens up really nicely with those two flaps there. So for the front panel, I'm going to be die cutting a yay word out of it to kind of create a little window there. So I'm going to be using this scripty yay sentiment from the So Many Yays die set. And I really love those dies because they kind of cover a card, but it also has this extra stamp that you can buy separately. But I really love the sentiments that go along with it, like the commencing happy dance and the highest of high fives to you. So that's really unique as well. Even though I didn't end up using it on today's card, it'll definitely be used in the future. So I die cut that out of the front panel there. So I opened it up and die cut it out. And then I'll peel out that whole die cut. So I'm not going to paper piece back inside of the ye uh, or inside the A or the Y pieces. I'm just going to leave it nice and open like that. So I'm going to come in with a pencil here and trace this onto the second panel because there we're going to be creating a scene with some of the images. So I want to make sure that it's nice and traced so I can kind of place my images through the letters. So here you can see those pencil marks. They're really nice and faint there. But I'm going to use this Love You Forever stamp set. Now I'm not a huge cat person, but I love how these were drawn and I think they're awesome. So I'm going to be using these to create my scene. And I want the little cat's heads to be poking out of the little windows here. So I'm going to be kind of placing them strategically inside there, kind of randomly, along where the yay word kind of will have it poking through. So you'll see some of their whiskers and some of their little faces. And I'll also stamp down some of the accessories inside of here, like the bird and the bumblebee, as well as some of the roses and things like that, to kind of fill in some of the other spaces as well. So every cat kind of is doing its own little activity, which I kind of wanted to make them all do their own little thing here. So after I've got that, I'm going to erase all those pencil marks really lightly. They kind of come off really nice and faint, um, and you don't want to draw them on too dark. But after I've erased all of those lines, I'm going to then move on to coloring these in. So to do my coloring, I'm using colored pencils and a Gamsol uh, marker. I had created this in a past video, and it's super helpful for coloring. So I'll link that video on screen somewhere here. But I filled this alcohol ink blending marker with Gamsol. So I'm coloring in these images, and I'm able to really easily scribble on some colored pencil and blend it out using this Gamsol marker that I had created. So it's a really fun idea, and it's really easy to use for blending or coloring on the go, or just in your craft room as well. And to clean it off between colors, you just wipe it off on a separate sheet of cardstock. So for all these little cats, like I said, I don't really have a cat because they make me sneeze and I'm allergic to them. But I wanted to kind of create little patterns on each cat and make each one look different. So you'll see on these first two, I'm creating like the color, a solid wash of color. And then I'm going to go in and add some stripes. And after I've added those, they're a little bit harsh. So I blend them out with the marker again. And then they kind of blend into the fur. So I think this is a really fun way to color the animals in, and it's really simple. I kind of struggle with Copics and doing smaller detail like this, but I love how the cats are kind of open and really simple images, so you get lots of practice coloring them in. So here I'm adding little spots onto this cat. Now it got kind of dark with the black color there. When I added the Gamsol, it kind of almost brightens and intensifies the color. So if it got a little too dark, I'm going to wipe it off to the side and then continue blending and coloring, and it'll make the color a little bit lighter. And also, if you want to make it look like they have like a little snout, you can kind of color around their little nose and kind of shade that in so it makes it look like it's kind of three-dimensional there. 
So here you can stop right here, this is perfectly fine. But I thought that inside of the window of the yay, I wanted a little bit more color. So I'm gonna be adding some colored pencils, just random coloring, kind of looks like grass there. And I'm just gonna add that all around. And I'm going to just feather out the edges. I'm not gonna color in the whole panel here. I'm just kind of coloring around those cats and making sure that it fills in the space where the yay window will cover over top of it. So I'm using lots of different shades here. And you could also do ink blending, but I didn't want to have to mask each cat, so this was another easy option for me. So after I've done that, I'm going back in with the blend marker here. So you could either use the bullet nib or the larger tip as well, and get this really easily blended and complete. So like I said, when you go over top of it with that marker though, it does really intensify that color, so you get that really fun, bright background by doing this. So after I've colored that all in, I'm going to use this little sentiment from the cat stamp set called Meow Did It. So I really love how that kind of fills in the inside. And then to finish off the coloring, I'm going to add a little bit of green colored pencil to ground the cats a little bit more and add little streaks of grass here and there kind of underneath them and around it to make it look like they're all standing and playing in the grass. So to make sure that all that sentiment was going to stay together with that window there, since there were some little pieces that would kind of stick up, I added a piece of acetate right over top of this, and then I'll sandwich it in with another piece of cardstock that has the yay word die cut out of it. So you don't need to do that, it just kind of finishes it off a little bit more. So here is that finished card there, and I really like this as well because it leaves space for you to write your sentiment on the inside there too. So now moving on to the next card. This one is actually an A2 size card, but it's got another flap you have to attach to it, so it's a little more difficult. So here I messed up a bit. I cut it lengthwise first, but really for this first portion, you're just cutting an A2 size card. So you wanna do um, eight and a half by five and a half, so you can have right in half of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. So then here I'm gonna score it right at the A2 mark, which is four and one fourth. And then after I've scored that, I can crease it down and move on to the next panel here. So this one will be five and a half, so right in half of the cardstock as well. And then I'll score, and then I'll cut that down again at four and three fourths. So that's going to add a little bit of a flap on the side there. And also, you can check my blog out for dimensions on that. So for that, I'm going to score it right at the A2 mark again, so four and one fourth. So that creates that little flap there. So now I'm using this Puppy Kisses stamp set. It's also another adorable little critter stamp set. So I wanted to include all of these. So this is why we're creating the trifolds. Now I'm going to share this really quick portion with you. So this is the flap kind of front panel piece. And I did it wrong. So this is future me kind of redoing it. So I'm going to stamp those three puppies down and really roughly cut it out here. But I wanted to show you it's important to cut it out before you would hear it onto your card, kind of put the card together because then you'll have this little flap sticking out. So this isn't the real card that I'm creating, but I had to do card surgery on the other one since it didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. So when you're doing this, just make sure you cut this portion before you add it to the card so you only have that little piece sticking on the other side of the card. So for this one, I had it going all the way up because I adhered the card before I did any of the cutting. So you wanna make sure you do that beforehand. So now here is where I'm actually putting the card together. You'll see me kind of messing with vellum here too. Ignore that whole portion there. That didn't actually get included in the final card, but I really love how this one turned out and I didn't want to have to redo it. So I'm adding that piece together using some strong score tape adhesive. So that'll make sure the whole card stays together. And I use my Teflon bone folder on that to make sure it's stuck. And then you can kind of fold it all up there. So I'm lining up my little dog images here. So for the first row, I'm actually gonna have three dogs here. I'm only inking up two right now, but you'll see me stamp a third in just a second. So I'll stamp these two down about as high as I would want them to be. And the second row will just be a tiny bit higher. And then I'll stamp down that middle dog as well. So here then I'm going to go a little bit up from their feet and I'm going to use a paper trimmer to just cut in between here. So it's helpful to have the little sliding paper trimmer with the guide there. And I like this little Fiskars one here. And I'm just gonna cut right in between each one of the dogs, making sure that it kind of goes almost up to the edge there, leaving a little bit of a border. And then I'll go in and fussy cut these images out. Now I'll show you how to use the dies with this in just a little bit to make it a little bit easier. But I don't mind fussy cutting, so I just went right around these images and kind of unlatched it from that top panel there. So that's why it helps to have that little paper trimmer to create that straight line. 
So then I lined those dogs up right in between the other ones, stamped them down, and then here, instead of doing the paper trimmer first, I'm gonna line up these dies along with that line that I want them to be on there. And then I'm going to die cut this out. Now when I do this, I'm making sure that the plate only goes up to the portion where I want it to cut, and anything that's hanging outside of the plate won't cut. So this is partial die cutting, so it won't cut the whole image out, and this will be sure, this will make it so that I can go in with my paper trimmer right now and cut the rest of it out. So I'm going to go around where it didn't cut and just make a straight line with the paper trimmer. So after I've done that there, this is going to kind of release that image from there, and then I'm going to cut that top portion off. So that'll be cut off my card there, and then I can go in with my Teflon bone folder and fold over these lines to make sure that they're nice and scored and creased down on the card. So this creates that fun little party of dogs. So now I'm going to go in with my, paper, um, with my colored pencils again, and I sped this up once again, but I'm just doing some really simple colored pencil coloring on these images. I find this really fun and easy to do, and I have a little bit more luck with colored pencils because they're easy to blend and create with, and when I'm doing these dogs, I just went in with a light, solid scribble wash of color there and blended that out with a Gamsol marker again. And then after I did that, you can then go back in with another colored pencil, either the same shade pushing down a little bit more or going in with a darker shade and just adding some shading in kind of around the snout like I did on the cats and around their ears and paws and things like that. And that just creates a little bit of depth, kind of like you would with your Copic markers to add a little bit of blending and highlights. I don't really think that it matters where all that stuff goes, but I think it is a little bit important to have that depth and dimension there. So adding different shades of the color to make it more interesting. So here with this little poodle, I colored it in gray, added a little bit of shading, and now I'm coloring in its little skin tone um, with some tan colors there. So I'll then blend that out with my colored pencils and um, then I'll keep going with the coloring here, and don't be afraid to mix colors. So here I made kind of a yellowish golden dog, and I'll go in with a brown color here and blend that out with the Gamsol marker, so it makes it a little bit more of a sandy color. So don't be afraid to do that and kind of mix colors and blend like that. So after I'm done here, this is my little party of dogs all colored in. I really love how it looks there, and I love how staggered they are on those lines and how it'll all open up so you got to use lots of those images. So then here I'm using this celebratory banner die and I'm going to die cut the stitching portion of it from the top of my card there. Um, this is the bottom portion of the card where kind of the inside note would be written down below. And so after I've scored or cut those little scoring lines, I've also cut all the little banner flags out of a bunch of little tiny pieces of cardstock. And then I'm going to adhere those down using some collage medium. So this is just a really um, strong adhesive. And I'm just pressing in the little flags right in rainbow order kind of across the top there. So after I've done that, I can peel that top portion off. And that was just to help kind of line everything up. So after that's all complete, I'm going to then mask off the bottom portion there. So that's where my little note is going to be written. And then I can ink blend using some Distress Oxide, kind of blending the color upwards. So this just creates a little bit of interest in the background right behind those dogs. So after I've done that, I'm going to add some little sprays because the water will react with that ink there. And I'll lift that up with a paper towel so you get that fun texture in the background along with those inks. So then to reveal that magic moment, I'm using some of the purple thermal web tape. So I'll peel it off and it won't rip my cardstock here. And then to reuse this tape, you can just go off to the side and wipe it off, and then I can reuse it over and over again for masking. So you get to use that a lot. Now I'm going to place this in my Misty because I didn't want to ruin my sentiment here, and I'm going to stamp down the Sending Puppy Kisses and Birthday Wishes sentiment right on the outside panel. So that's the outermost panel there. And then to finish off the card, I'm going to add a little bit of Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Flow pen and onto the banner flags there to add a little bit of interest and it won't come off on your hand. And then I'm also going to add some little Nubo drops in a fine detailer bottle in black. And I'm just gonna add these to the nose and the eyes of the little critters here. And you wanna let this dry for a while so you don't smear it, but this just adds a little bit of extra detail and dimension and gives makes those eyes and the nose of the dogs really pop and stand out. So here is a finished look at that little puppy trifolding card too. I really love how this one turned out as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on screen to join my family and never miss another video like this one. 
Also, I'll have my blog linked on screen and the MFT blog linked down below, so be sure to check both of them out as I was guesting over there for much more information and a full supplies list. So I'll see you guys very soon for another video. Have a great day.